These are my confessions. In the land of popular music, the marketing of an artist is an essential ingredient to their success. The ability to maintain the public's attention and keep them engaged can be difficult, but is what in turn results in longevity. There's no better marketing tactic than controversy. It always works. It creates word of mouth between the public and ultimately gathers interest for an artist. Confessions, the fourth studio album by R&B singer Usher, is a masterclass in this type of marketing. Over the course of 17 tracks, Usher leverages the controversy from his public breakup with TLC member Chili to create a record that intermixes reality with fantasy. At face value, this album may seem like the typical R&B album about sex and partying. However, if you take a closer look, you will find that this record is an entrance to the mind of a man who made arguably the biggest adult mistake one can make. In this video, we'll be discussing how Confessions transformed Usher's image, as well as how its legacy holds up in today's music scene. Let's get into it. In order to understand the significance of Confessions to Usher's career, you're going to need to understand his image prior to its release. Usher Raymond IV was born on October 14, 1978, and was raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. His mother was a choir director who got him into singing at the age of nine. Once she caught wind of how good his singing ability was, they relocated to Atlanta to look for a record deal. At the age of 13, he auditioned for the singing competition show Star Search and caught the attention of Bryant Reed, the brother of LaFace Records' L.A. Reed. Brian brought Usher to LA and he was impressed with Usher's singing ability and soft skills with the lady employees. LA signed him on the spot, but soon became regretful after Usher started losing his voice due to puberty. LA considered dropping him, but was instead convinced by rapper Puffy to send him to New York to hang out with the Bad Boy crew. For those of you who don't know, Bad Boy Records was an iconic 90s record label hosting some of the hottest rappers and R&B singers, like Mace, The Notorious B.I.G., and Faith Evans. Usher describes his time with the Bad Boy crew as some of the hardest days of his life because he was constantly being exposed to such an adult lifestyle. He said in a 2004 Rolling Stone interview, there were always girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it, or several people in a room having an orgy. You never knew what was going to happen. This adult lifestyle translated into Usher's first studio album, executively produced by Puffy. Despite the hype of the album, it flopped mainly because he was a 16 year old talking about having sex. After the album flopped, Usher decided to drop the bad boy image and became more himself. Collaborating with legendary producers Jermaine Dupri and Babyface, Usher released his second studio album on September 16th of 1997. The album is really what shot Usher to mainstream pop popularity, with the single You Make Me Wanna going platinum in the US. Usher capitalized on his popularity, and like most 90s singers, he started acting in movies like The Faculty and Light It Up. He also toured with Janet Jackson, opening up for her on the Velvet Rope tour. Usher set up to release his third studio album, but due to it being leaked on the file sharing program Napster, he re-recorded all new songs with production from The Neptunes, Jermaine Dupri, and Babyface. He titled it 8701 and released it on August 7th of 2001. It was around this time that Usher began dating Chili from TLC. They spent a lot of time together due to being label mates on LaFace Records. Usher and Chili had an undeniable chemistry, and were seen in multiple public events. Chili even appeared in three of Usher's music videos, but then at the end of 2003, they suddenly split. Two months later, Chili went on the radio to imply that Usher was to blame. Let me set the record straight. Usher did the ultimate no-no to me, and I will never be with him ever again. In the beginning of 2004, Arista Records had a few listening parties for Usher's fourth studio album, Confessions. A song that caught everyone's attention was the title track in which a man found out he had impregnated his side chick. Rumors about the relationship of Chili and Usher began to swirl. Did Usher get another girl pregnant while with Chili? Instead of denying the rumors, Usher fully embraced the controversy. On February 17th of 2004, he told MTV News, I wasn't in a relationship and got another girl pregnant right now, but it's something I can relate to and it's something that has happened to me in the past. Usher never denied that the song wasn't about him, and so the hype for the album just got bigger and bigger. Building on 
on the controversy and hype, Usher finally released Confessions on March 23rd of 2004. Although the album is not fully based on Usher's relationship with Chili, diving into the contents of the record, it becomes clear that Usher intermixes his own relationship with his collaborator's relationship to structure a narrative around his own public image. It may not make total sense at first, but if you rearrange the tracklist, you can fully see that there's a narrative story being told. The first songs Follow Me and Superstar set the scene for us. Usher has found the girl of his dreams, presumably Chili. She's quite literally and figuratively a superstar in his eyes. The song Caught Up shows us just how in love Usher is. All throughout his life, he's been the player, but now he's the one devoted in the relationship. However, in the next track, Burn, we start to see cracks in paradise. Usher feels disconnected from his girlfriend, stating it's been a long time coming, but we done fell apart. Really want to work this out, but I don't think you're going to change. Usher stated in a 2004 Rolling Stone interview that the reason he and Chili broke up was because they were constantly fighting, and when they decided to go on an indefinite break, Usher went to see other women. In the songs Yeah and Bad Girl, Usher talks about the night he went out to the club looking for that other woman. He details the moment he forgot to use protection on the track that's what it's made for. At this point in the storyline, it starts to become less and less about Usher and more about the character he created. In Truth Hurts, Usher gets back with his girlfriend and accuses her of being unfaithful, knowing it's only because of his own guilty conscience. The track Take Your Hand and Can You Handle It both have Usher pondering whether his girlfriend will be able to handle this big truth. But before Usher ever gets the chance to decide, he gets the call no grown man ever wants to get. His side chick is three months pregnant. Usher mans up and tells his girlfriend, but she ultimately leaves him on the song throwback, resulting in a heartbroken Usher. In the last song, Simple Things, Usher gives the men listening a final warning. Cherish her before she ends up leaving. Anyone who's ever felt guilt knows it's not a nice feeling. It's paralyzing, especially when you hurt someone you love. This album perfectly captures the range of emotions you go through when you have a guilty conscience. Just in my opinion, I honestly think Confessions laid the groundwork so that r &B artists could talk about raw and uncharted topics, like in SZA's Control and Drake's early albums. In the end, Usher's ambiguity and willingness to allow rumors to run wild made him the success that he was. Selling 1.1 million records within its first week, Confessions was the best-selling album of 2004. Funny enough, in a later MTV interview, Usher stated, The word kinda got out that I had a baby. I did a song, Confessions Part 2, about a gentleman that has to confess to his girl that he's got a baby and he hopes she gives him another chance, but I don't have a child in real life. Despite all the ambiguous answers he was giving before, it turns out Usher never had a kid at this time, showing us again the importance of a great marketing tactic. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I worked really hard on it, so if you guys liked it, then please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. If you would like to follow the flashy Insta, it's just Flashy Magazine. I'll put it down below in the description. That's all I got for now. Thank you guys again for tuning in to another flashy video, and I will catch you guys with the next one real soon.